a agent with us here at Rise of Royalty. She's been here for a little bit. She's been in the business uh, longer than me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> she knows some stuff. Um, she has recently um, joined the Professional Standards Committee at uh, North County Association of Realtors. Um, anybody can do this. You know, if you want to get involved with your local board, you can get on different committees and things like that. Um, it is a very good learning experience to sit on these types of uh, committees because you do get exposed to a lot of things that are going on in the industry uh, with, you know, other agents. It has nothing to do with you, uh, but you do get exposed to um, lots of different scenarios. So, and that's how you become better is being exposed to these types of scenarios and how they get worked out. So, um, today, um, let me share my screen. Um, we are going to talk about mediation. Um, this is something that Sonia is going to be participating in with the North County Association of Realtors. Um, and this is a question that's come up a lot um, just over the years. Like, what is mediation? We see it in the contract, you know, we initial off on it. Um, but what is the process? You know, if you have a complaint, if you have a commission dispute, um, things like that, what do you do? You know, do you just roll over and die? No, you go to mediation. So um, we're going to talk about how this goes. So uh, good morning, Sonia. How's it going? Good morning. Good. Thank you for um, having me here to explain mediation. Um, um, one of the things I want to um, express to everybody that um, even though it sometimes seems scary, um, it's a, it, mediation is a benefit for all of us. And it's a way to work through issues that you might have with another, um, another realtor. Uh, usually uh, it's over money, monetary. Uh, sometimes it can be an uh, ethics conduct uh, issue. And if it's both, then you have to file mediation and I'll explain how that works. And then you also file a, uh, a gre in grievance, you uh, file a conduct or ethics issue. And the uh, grievance committee will do the investigation on that. And then there will be a hearing. So that's a separate thing from actual mediation. Now, if mediation, you go through mediation and it's resolved, you uh, the complainant can say. Mediation is a conversation you have, actually. It's a it's a way to communicate um, and express your feelings about a particular situation that's occurred. And the just so you know, mediators are volunteers. We're all volunteers. But we are experienced agents, uh, all of us experienced agents. And um, for me, I've been um, a realtor uh, over 38 years now. Can't believe it myself, but <laughs> but I have been. And I've also been a coach and a mentor. I've owned my own office, had 35, 40 agents. So I have a lot of uh, trained agents um, and I love the business. And, um, and the reason I decided to... my family, and I wanted to do something to, to give back. So that's the reason I got involved with the pro standards. Um, I'll sit on hearings, and then um, I went through the mediation training. And that's the other thing. All mediators go through extensive training, so you know how to mediate. And when you, when you file a mediation, the complainant uh, files, there's a $250 fee. And that's it. No, no other fees are charged. And, um, and then the respondent doesn't pay anything. So it's just the person that is uh, wanting to hold a mediation. And you have to mediate before you arbitrate. So that's a requirement. And the California Association of Realtors and the NAR set up the guidelines in the Code of Ethics and the Mediation and Arbitration Manual. And uh, all boards follow the same procedure of mediation arbitration. So I want you to, to know that. And um, so once you decide that you're going to mediate, there's a dispute over um, a commission or, or whatever it might be. Um, then you file that and you pay your 250. 
And then the mediators will talk to each party. And then you decide, do you want to do this together in a joint session or do you want to do it separate? Um, and so once you make, make that decision, then we go forward. So um, it say, let's say it's a joint session where you that in the manual, the California Association of Realtors. But we set the guidelines and we one of the guidelines is we listen to each other and we try to have some empathy, believe it or not. <laughs> and if you're upset and, and um, about a particular situation, um, it's hard to do that. So we ask you to just sit quietly and listen to the um, person and um, listen intently from a place where you can understand, not from a place where you're thinking about what you're going to say. So there's a big difference in listening from a place of service. Mediation. And so um, we'll ask the people to come together, then we'll listen to the one, usually the, the claimant first, and then the respondent. And then we separate you and you go into separate rooms. And then we each of the mediators goes into the room and talks to and asks questions and tries to answer questions that we can. And um, then we also ask you, well, what would you like to do? So the decision um, is totally uh, up to the claimant and respondent. So we encourage you to, to make a decision. And most of the time, I would say 80 to 90% of the time, it will be resolved. Um, I don't think anybody really wants to go to arbitration or, or court. And so most of the time, these issues can be resolved. Once it is resolved, then um, we draw up an agreement and everybody signs the attorneys. If you have an attorney, you can have an attorney there. The attorney will also sign. Everybody signs, a mediator sign. And that agreement is binding, legal and binding, and cannot be changed or modified or um, disputed in arbitration or a court of law. It's final. So that's pretty much uh, how, how it all works. Um, if you're a non-member, you can also file, but there's a different fee. There's a filing fee of $150 uh, administrative fee. And then depending on the amount of money that is uh, being um, um, uh, charge will be based on that amount. Now, we allow four hours for mediation. And once um, the four hours is up, then it's $100 an hour, $100 an hour for each party. So yes, there's the, uh, now you can see on here the fees. So if you're a non-member, it's $150 fee. And then depending on the amount of money uh, and the dispute, uh, then you're charged accordingly. So that's kind of kind of how it works so um questions that have kind of come up you know what's the difference between mediation and litigation well basically um litigation a lot of times you're going to court and you're litigating over it, but but mediation you actually come to a decision um, that you're not having to go any further in lit to litigate. Once your decision's made and you've agreed to it, then that's the end of it. So yeah. you don't have to arbitrate or go to arbitration or litigate uh, at all. So um, I think mediation is the way to go. Um, it's, a it's a discussion you have. You're trying to understand the other person's perceptive, uh, their, their perception, their ideas, their thoughts about something. And sometimes it's just a misunderstanding, believe it or not. Sometimes yeah. it's just that simple. And, um, and so that's why we have this discussion. We listen to each party, and then we try to help guide as mediator um, and answer any questions, because sometimes it's just you just didn't understand. And so um, something so simple. I think I think the idea of mediation arbitration is a little scary for most of us. We don't like to 
have conflict. And so, um, it, and if you run your business honestly and you follow the code of ethics, um, most of the time you shouldn't have any issues, you know, but things do happen, they come up. Um, and um, that's why this is such a wonderful benefit for, for all of us to be able to use. Arbitration is going to cost money. As whether you whether you win or not, you will end up paying more money. Yeah, I mean, a retainer fee you, you're forking out at least twenty five hundred bucks mm -hmm. right up front. You That's know, we're like five, just depending on what you have going on. Um, so, you know, that's set by the attorney and what they think their exposure is going to be right. uh, to get the thing going. But um, yeah, it's it's not cheap to get into lit litigation or, you know, if, if you have egos involved and they, they want to go straight to that, the mediation <laughs> is the better option. You we know, need to I guys, always put a, opt. Put well, aside that, guys, to put aside our egos is not always easy to do, you know, yeah. so it's because usually both people think they're right, you know, yeah. that's where, that's why mediation is so helpful because it helps you to set that aside and maybe look at it from another person's perspective. And, yeah. um, which isn't always easy to do, especially when you've worked hard and there's, um, you know, five, $10,000, uh, commission, um, you know, that you've worked hard for. So, um, but it is a wonderful way to be able to, you know, communication is really the key to try to work through issues together. <clears throat> and that's what it really is about. That's what it's about when we're working with our buyer and seller is, is how effective are we con uh, communicating with our clients? And the yeah. same thing with other agents. You want to have good rapport and be able to work through things. Yeah, and that's another thing too. When you are working with the clients, um, and you know things start to get kind of hairy, and you know it seems like we're not going to get some sort of resolution, we do want to push towards mediation first because you know anything we can do to avoid EO claims is what I'm going to opt for as a broker because if we have to file an EO claim immediately the company costs start going up and in which case then I have to start passing those through obviously so luckily we don't have these happening because we are pretty good at resolving you know little flare ups and things like that but you know if you are getting into a situation obviously get me involved but also you know you want to talk about the mediation op option. It's, you know, a couple hundred dollars. You're going to go, if you're not face to face with someone. You're not duking it out in a ring. You know, you, you sit in <laughs> separate rooms and someone kind of just goes back and forth right. between the two. And, and uh, the there's guidelines that we set and, um, and ahead of time. And to hear the other party and the guidelines are no interruption. You just listen and that way you take it in and then you can ask questions too. And, um, and then uh, once that's done, we separate them and that way we can discuss openly um, what their thoughts and feelings are. And many times it's resolved just from, just from that alone. Yeah. So I think the remember communication is the most, that's really our job is communicating effectively, whether it's negotiating or resolving an issue with the seller or buyer and the agent. You know, our agents are, are, are there are colleagues that we really need good relationships with. You know, they can help us make or break a deal. And so yeah. we need to look at that. Hey, how lucky we are to have this association where we come together. It's a community and that we um, and we need to take care of that. And um, and I think respect one another. And that's the other thing that showing respect, showing respect for one another, whether you agree with that person or not, um, and at least listening to see what they have to say. And that's all mediation is, is a conversation to try to work through an issue and come to um, an amicable result. Yeah, we have one question. Um, if you don't initial those boxes on the RPA and you don't want to give up 
uh, going to court, do you go through mediation first? You still have to go through mediation. It's required. So, and it's something I would definitely still push for as well, because it is the much cheaper option and the success rate is pretty high on getting right. it resolved. So court I, takes yeah. so long, you know, to litigate or to go through anything like that. You could be talking years right. of going through this because of, you know, that's how attorneys make money, obviously. You know, they are actually part of the delay of why things take so long because they're racking up their fees. Exactly. And they know there's going to be some sort of settlement. It's a stress, the stress of going through yeah, it. It's really not worth it. No, it isn't. It, it'll affect your business, you know, believe it me. It will negatively so, uh -huh. every time. So um, set up the mediation. It's quick to get on um, the schedule, I believe, much faster than the other route, which is arbitration and, you know, going to court. So you can get this thing resolved, whatever it is, procuring cause or earnest money dispute or whatever you have going on, you can get it resolved much, much faster. You can move on with your life. Everybody can move on with their life. Um, nobody is perfectly happy. It seems like what I've learned. Um, but a resolution does happen, you know, not one party's not jumping up and down saying, yay, I won. Right. It's more of like, okay, it, this is fine. We're going to move forward. You know? And I want to encourage people that, um, if remember that the mediators and the attorneys do not make the decision, it's your yeah. decision. And I want to encourage people, if you do have a procuring cause, or you believe that you do, by all means, make sure that you file a mediation or you go in and you you at least uh, begin it and see where you are with it because if you've done all that work certainly it, it appears to me and it's not my decision but you you would be entitled to something so it, but at least it's worth fighting for you know and uh to be heard to see um g oh and um, and if there has been some conduct issue, um, that needs to be heard too. So um, it, it helps to keep our business um, in line and um, and above board, and you know, it, it doing things the right way. And I think yeah. that's important. With procuring cause, you know, um, what do you know about the outcome of that? I mean, is it always? You're entitled to the commission or are you not entitled to the commission or does there seem to be a resolve of uh, you, you get a portion of the commission and then they are also entitled to a portion of the commission? And a lot of it depends on what um, example, what has been done. The, the, the person that's a, the claimant, um, did, uh, did they show the property, find the property, show the property? Did they have the person pre- And then did they write an offer or maybe they didn't write an offer? Maybe they just showed the property, you know? And yeah. so a lot of things involved with that. And then um, many times that there will be a portion of the commission, um, you know, I haven't really seen a lot of it. So I really can't speak, you know, personally, but I do know that, that those are issues that should be heard and that they can be resolved. And I think if you've done a, a lot of the work, Sometimes you haven't really done that much, you know, and so yeah. you're not going to get that much, if anything. But I think it's worth it if you feel that you've done the job and the work, especially if you've found the property, showed the property, got them pre-approved, and you've uh, written an offer, presented an offer. Um, those are all definitely things that are very, um, would be considered. But again, remember, the mediators don't make the decision. It's yeah. really the parties and maybe it can't be resolved. And then maybe you have to go to arbitration, but I think it's worth fighting for. If you've done all that work, by all means, uh, use the system. You know, that's what it's here for. Yeah, and I if you go on, on a line and go to your, um, your board of realtors, go to the member center and then look, this information is pretty much what's on there. Uh, but I think that it's, it's good for you to know that it's there for you. Yeah. So um, if let's say there 
let's say it is procuring cause dispute um, and they mediate and they don't come to an agreement on it, maybe one the one side still believes that they're entitled to the full amount. Do the mediators give some sort of recommendation as to, look, we feel that um, this was a procuring cause, you know, a, Realtor A was a procuring cause, but Realtor B ended up closing the deal and, and getting the check, you know, but we feel that Realtor A was entitled to receive all or a portion of that. Do they give that recommendation if they don't come to the agreement of, look, guys, if you end up going to court, the chances of this ending up with the same um, recommendation that we're giving right now are 80%, 90%, 100%. You know, do they give that kind of at the end to get people to stay within the mediation realm and, and finish it out? Well, we um, we don't know when you go to arbitration what can uh, what can the outcome could be because it could yeah. we don't know that and the mediators don't make the decision. But what we can do is bring all of those things back out, you know, and then uh, um, show, hey, this is what's been said. Do you want to think about this? Okay, this person has done these things to to cause uh, the buyer wouldn't even have known about the property. We can bring those things out, but it's up to the parties to make the decision. We we can't make any decisions for you um, and we won't, um, but we will guide you and um, point things out to you, like what you just mentioned, um, that here's some things perhaps to consider. But again, so you do reference material as it, you're going along to try will. and get the other side to say, this is why the other party is di disputing this or, or, or yes. vice versa. Yes, yes that, that's part of our job is to bring out and to uh, repeat things. Bring it to their attention. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, now do you remember? This is what, here's some of the things that have been discussed. You know, so what do you think about that? You know, how do you feel about that? You know, and so, yeah, we will bring those things out. Absolutely, we do. But again, mm -hmm. we don't, we cannot make the decision for them. Yeah, you know, they have to yeah. make it themselves. And there is no guarantee if they go to arbitration, it's going to be any different. Yeah, that might not be. Yeah. So cool. Great info. If you've, <laughs> if you've had some sort of kind of dispute or anything and you've brought it to my attention and you're wondering why I ask so many questions and want to see certain things, it's because I, I will reference the contract 100% on my opinion of it. And even if I don't have an exact right or wrong, I'm usually somewhere in between. Like it, it appears like you're, you know, mostly in the right, but even all the, the disputes that I hear, nobody ever seems to be 100% right or wrong. It's usually a blend uh, because along the way, some things weren't done properly on both sides. And so then we end up with this dispute at the end. So even then, I'll give my opinion on how I think, I, how I think it's going to play out or, you know, what might happen moving forward. But um it never seems to be a hundred percent both sides. There always seems to be fault on, and that's, on, and that's the on both of them. Why, that's the reason why mediation is so effective because again, just like what you said, you're talking about it, you're discussing it, you're hearing from both sides, um, maybe things you hadn't heard before, you know, and, or you had a misconception. And uh, again, the same old story as you tell one person, something you tell the next person the same exact thing in the same exact way they have a completely different idea and perception about what that was and so it's, it's the job of the mediator to point those things out and to bring to their attention this is what's being said you know sometimes yeah. they're biases they so we try to try to bring that to out out in the in the front yeah and i think there's biases but there's also just misconceptions because mm -hmm. law in california is different than law in nevada or arizona or any other place 
Right. And so sometimes, you know, when someone bought a home many years ago or was, you know, even an agent in another state or something like that, and they don't, they were never licensed in this state, you know, sometimes what they think the contract means or how timelines work and stuff like that is completely different here in California exactly. than in a lot of other states, especially when we're dealing with contingency timelines. I mean, most other states, it's a drop dead timeline, you know, when the contingency date is up, it's up, you know, yeah. whereas here it's not. And so I see a lot of sellers, you know, that comes up all the time. Well, if they miss the, if they're, they're past the timeline, so I get their earnest money, right? No, that's not how it works. And then you got to explain it to them, you know, but that's, that's a really common misconception is, you know, timeline stuff and buyers in breach now because, you know, the timeline is up. But that's not exactly how it works. Well, and actually, the contract is very buyer geared when it comes to that. Well, I think the whole idea, too, is if both parties are wanting to continue, then you want to continue. You know, yeah. and if one doesn't, uh, then there may be some some issue there, you know, depending on the time frames, you know. And it, yeah. But most of the time, in my experience, is that it, most of the time they want to continue. You know, they're just, um, and that can be worked out. Um, I haven't really seen where, I'm rarely that a, a seller wants to cancel because of the time frame. you know, that wasn't met. I, I haven't seen too many times that would happen. I see it come up. It's not, it's not all the time where they want to cancel, but in markets like this, when it's really hot and they think they can get more money for the house, that's when I do see it. And they're looking for any reason they can. Exactly. to cancel um but a lot of times it's just simple like you know the investigations contingency is up and um you know the the buyer hasn't released him yet and the, the and so the seller thinks that oh well now i get the earnest money but yeah, know. you know that's not here that's that's it's more like the data. <laughs> it's all <laughs> yeah so Money is the is the key, and that's that's the thing with mediation. It's a mon mostly a monetary uh, issue, and um, but just know that this is a wonderful opportunity that we have and a benefit that we have. Um, you know that we can resolve these things. You know, and um, I think it's just great myself that we. Have career and um they both all came out favorable from for myself both times because the one time the broker and the agent lied the second time was a um it, it was quite quite interesting to go through it was difficult to go through but um but we i went through it and i learned a lot and uh um, and I came out fine, you know, so I think yeah. it, the other thing is if you tell the truth, you're honest, you follow the guidelines that are set forth by California Association of Realtors and our NAR, uh, most times you're not going to have uh, any problems, you know, and, um, but if you do, um, and the other agent uh, you feel is not being truthful or honest, um, or is doing something unethical, then you have this wonderful opportunity to to bring it forward, and that's what, and you really should because it keeps our industry, um, you know, honest and where it should be. If, if yeah. you just let things go, then then what's going to happen is it's going to, I think, um, degrade and and um, create problems in our industry. We we want to try to catch those things, so. Yeah. It, almost like an obligation you have, you know, to bring Kinda. things forward. That's how I look at it, but. <laughs> One last question so we can wrap up. Um, what are kind of the main cases that come up in mediation? You know, is it usually realtor versus realtor? Is it, um, you know, client versus client? Or, you know, what are what are kind of the, I don't know, maybe top three or four that usually come through on, on mediation I requests? Think most of the time it's realtor and realtor it's an yeah. issue with the commission something that happened or something did you know should have happened or you know and um most of the time but but it can be between a buyer and, a, and an agent a buyer and a, 
uh, a seller. It can be mm -hmm. all of those things. But generally speaking, most of the time we're seeing it's a agent to agent. And it's usually commission, so procuring cause. Always, almost mm -hmm. always for money. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. And we we'll have to do a, a follow up procuring cause webinar. That's yeah. a tricky one. Yes, it is. But I think <laughs> that um, yeah, I was talking to Jennifer Soto, our um, our. procuring cause and and it it you really if you think there is a procuring cause like she said and I, I i agree is that you really need to file you know don't second guess it just uh if you have done the work um and the buyer ended up going somewhere else and writing with the listing agent um or writing again with a listing agent or with another agent then uh, you need to report that um, yeah. And you get paid if you did most of the work. So, um, but anyway, um, yeah. yeah, you have an op. This is what I think you have an opportunity, but also an obligation um, as a realtor in our industry to bring those things forward. And you, you, think you need to get paid. <laughs> there's there's a percentage of realtors out there that. Uh, you know, skirt the line of ethics when it comes to earning a commission. And so they bank on other agents not wanting to take the time um, and hassle to go through mediation to dispute a commission. So, you know, the only way to rectify that is to do your part and file the mediation, you know, and right. see if you have earned your portion or all of that commission due to procuring cause. So, you know, by not doing it, you're actually you are hurting the industry a little bit more um, and letting agents like that continue with their practices of uh, whatever it is they're doing. So. And again, you can file both uh, ethics um, issue uh, and that's investigated and you can file um, and it's two, just 250 for, uh, and that's all, that's the total fee you don't have to pay anything more and then the respondent doesn't pay anything so mm -hmm. <laughs> so they just gotta show up what happens if they don't show up well i i i'm not sure to tell <laughs> you the, the answer to that but if they don't show up obviously there isn't anything and so uh if they had agreed to show up then that is another issue and um yeah. i think it depends on the reason yeah yeah so I guess if they just continue not wanting to, well, if they are a realtor, I guess they probably, there might be some kind of repercussion there if it's if, realtor I, to realtor. I'm sure they would be um, reprimanded for that, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't know what that would be a fee. It could be the fee. Um, you know, I, I don't know the uh, total answer, but that's a good question uh, that I will talk to Jennifer about. Yeah, maybe we'll throw it in the, uh... The Facebook group under this recording. If you come up with that answer, I will so, get that. And uh, yeah. that's great. any other questions you have, just please feel free to ask. And if I don't have the answer, I'll get it for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Appreciate well, it. We're coming up on our hour mark, so let's go ahead and wrap up. But that was really informative, and maybe we'll do a procuring cause one. Uh, you know, in the upcoming months. Okay. And um, you know, everybody can learn about that fun subject. I'll so. get all that information. And I yeah. think it's the more information we have, um, we educate ourselves, we know more, then you you feel better. You just like you're not worried about it because it, you know, you know what you can do and what your rights are. And um, and again, we have a great um, all of us have where whatever board you belong to, um, they're just wonderful, wonderful so support system. And um yeah. so take advantage of. <laughs> for listening appreciate yeah. it awesome thanks for coming on that was thank informative you. and uh hope everybody has a great week and let us know if you need anything thank you thank you very okay. much bye-bye we'll bye